might need the, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, might need to turn my microphone up again. Um, you know, like, first of all, sorry to keep you waiting, but like, um, what that coach, you know, Coach Painter's done for me in my career, like, I'm, I'm going to talk to him after the game. <laughs> We're going to spend some time talking. We're going to talk about our teams. And uh, I'm going to call him and try and get help from him, too. Right? Hopefully, we'll have to play him again. But we can help each other now. Um, I thought our guys really fought and competed. Like we knew how tough this game was going to be. Um, like, they had lost, you know, the, the game before. And we talked about what they were doing in practice and how hard those practices were going to be. But also, like, that doesn't have anything to do with us. Like, we play hard because we're supposed to play hard every single time. Whether we won, won two games in a row, lost two games in a row. Uh, whether we're playing the number three team in the country or the number 353 team in the country, and our guys are doing that. And I'm proud of their effort. I hate losing. You guys know this. I hate losing. Uh -huh. But when you prepare the right way, when you play and you leave everything out there on the court, you can feel okay with the results. And I feel okay with the results. Like I, like I said, I hate losing. Um, but we were, the, we were a good version of ourselves, and we left everything on the court. And we'll get back to work tomorrow and get ready for Rutgers. Okay, John. Micah, it seemed like Seth couldn't really get going in the first half. How much of that was what you guys were doing offensively, and how much was he was spending a lot of energy guarding Jaden Ivey at times too? Yeah, you know, um, he's guarded. I mean, really this whole season, he's been on the best player on the other team almost every game, if they have a wing player that's like that. So I think he's okay. Um, I don't think that really took anything from him. They did a good job of <clears> – <throat> kind of in our split cuts, taking away uh, the initial handoffs or the quick hitting ball screen, the things that we wanted to do. Uh, they just made that tough on us. And I, I think he was slow to get going in that way because they were denying him the ball on those cuts. So we needed to do a better job of cutting, uh, tight curling to get him off of our bodies a little bit or using the five and then screening. So we tried to do more of that. Uh, but I think late he got some open shots just, you know, off picket drawn out of hell. So, um, you know, those are all things that we got to continue to correct. And, you know, we need to be better out of timeouts. You know, when we have opportunities to get him the ball and do stuff for him, like we got to be locked into that and we got to execute. And, you know, that will help him get more shots as well. One of the positive residuals of a game where – Maybe at the end of the day, they're just a little bit better than you. And it's not so much that you shot yourself in the foot or didn't play well. You do a lot of the things that you want to do, um, and they just beat you. I mean, is there a residual there that you can kind of work with moving forward? I don't know. I mean, the residual of that is kind of ruins my night, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> All right, like, I'm going to walk upstairs, and I'm going to watch this film and figure out how we can get better. Uh, I, I don't – the residual of this is, like, I'm going to always fight for our program. I'm going to do that first and foremost. Like, what I don't like, and I feel disrespect. I get disrespected over everything, though, so you got to take this with a grain of salt. I don't like when people say that that loss sucks for Indiana and that's a bad loss. Like, we're not a bad team. We're not. Like, if you look at the teams that have beaten us, Miami's like 12-3. and three. Um, Should be ranked, close to being ranked, I don't know. Um, we've lost to Michigan State, who's ranked probably top 10 in the country. We've lost to Ohio State. We've lost to LSU, who are all in the top 25. Right? There's four. There's four losses. Now we've lost to Purdue, who's number three in the country. So, like, we're not a bad team. It's taken us a little time to get where we want to be, but – like, if people want to come in here and take us lightly, they can do that every day of the week that they want to. Um, but I'm always going to fight for this group. They play as hard as possible. We just went toe-to-toe -to -toe with the number three team in the country on the glass 
match their intensity. Um, you know, shot the same from basically three, the free throw line from the field, everything else. So uh, people that don't watch basketball think this is a bad loss when people come in here and get beat, right? Watch the game, understand the game, think about the game, and then make your decision about what's a bad loss and what isn't. Hey, Micah, are there challenges that come with you prepare a scouting report all week for a team that's going to have a giant center on the floor all the time and then they don't because of foul trouble? At the end of the first half, obviously, they played without Travion and Zach on the floor. Were there challenges to that, too, on the fly, kind of in a backhanded sort of way? Uh, not not too much. Uh, we didn't really prepare for Caleb to play the five, um, but it kind of goes back to you know, they're not going to run as much stuff in the post for him, right? right. Like, it's going to be more – ball screen actions for Jaden or more things for Sasha. Um, but, you know, we just go back to playing our regular defense and how we do it. Um, you know, you, you just kind of adjust to, to who's doing what, who's doing where, and you just know. Like, Caleb first a good player, though, right? They could throw it to him and get a bucket. He's a McDonald's All-American. Uh, you know, he's a really good player. But it didn't it didn't change, like, how we prepared or what we did or, or had to adjust. We just knew. Like we always talk about where's the fire, right? Like the fire is Travion and Zach in the post. The fire is Sasha running off those screens. Well, if Zach and Travion aren't in, the fire adjusts. The fire goes somewhere else, and then you have to, you know, take care of that. Just the impact Mason Gillis had on the game. Yeah, huge shots, just huge shots. We talked about his rebounding. Uh, with this team, you have to pick and choose, right? Like, you can't take everything away. There's a bunch of dudes that can shoot, and they have two monsters in the paint, and then guys rebounding on the glass. Like, what do you take away versus the number one offensive team in the country? You have to kind of cat and mouse Mason Gillis a little bit and try and, like, he's got to beat you, right? Like, can't let Sasha beat you, can't let the bigs beat you. Um, they can't, you know, get kick out open shots for Isaiah. Um, and Mason, like, kudos to him. He made some huge shots, big shots for them down the stretch. And uh, you know, sometimes you, you got to take a gamble. Sometimes it, you, the gamble works for you, and sometimes it doesn't. I'm not much of a gambler. I'm pretty cheap with my money. Um, Micah, how do you think your team played overall tonight, guarding Jaden and Travion? And overall, what still needs to improve down the stretch? Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I thought we did. I thought we did pretty well defensively. Um, you know, they scored 74 points. I don't know what they came in averaging, but a lot, 89, something yeah. like that. Like, you know, like we, we got them to play more of our tempo, more in half court, play against half court defense. We did a great job of getting back. They're so good. Jaden's so good at pushing the ball in transition, getting to the basket or kicking it out for threes. And we tried to eliminate that and I thought we did. Um, and then we forced it into a half-court game, and then you just do the best you can. And uh, I thought our guys did that. I thought we fought, like, as hard as we could. And, you know, there were some things that, like, we played some zone. We played three different zones. Um, and sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. But you got to change things up. Um, they're so good at reading what you do and, you know, getting into the feel of things and into a rhythm. They make it hard on you. Like, for us, um, we have to play the exact same way. Exact same way. With the way we compete, the effort we play with, the togetherness we play with, we have to play the exact same way. No matter if, like I said, if we're playing number three in the country, number 353, we have to do the exact same way. And that gives us a chance every night. It gave us a chance against Indiana. It gave us a chance against Northwestern. It gave us a chance against Purdue. They'll give us a chance against Rutgers. Nate. Mike, it's, it's kind of tough to fixate on the last two minutes when you made nine straight going into it, but did, did you like the looks that you got at the end um, and just kind of how you came out of that? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, it, it allowed them to kind of take away what we were doing, like when they got up. Travion gets a three-point play, and now we're down a little bit more. You know, we have to kind of change what we're doing, try and get a quick win here because we're up against the clock a little bit. And so, um, 
that took us away from what we wanted to do, right? If it's a two-point game or a three-point game, one-point game, we probably stayed with what we were doing um, in the pick and roll. But we had to change it, try and get a quick, try and get a quick bucket out of the timeout. They took it away, what we were looking for, and then we were scrambled a little bit there at the end. I didn't want to burn another timeout uh, coming out of the, the side out just because like now you're down to zero and you can't draw up anything late if you need it. So, um, you know, we executed for a long time. Like We executed better as the game went on. There's two games in a row. We've gotten better as the game goes on because we're starting to see different things and our guys are doing a great job of reading what the defense is doing. And, and then, you know, we go on the barrage of shot making. David? Michael, what, what, what has Greg Lee's presence unlocked for you guys, whether it's on the glass or offensively, and, and what impact did he have tonight? Yeah, Greg. <clears throat> like, we obviously miss Greg, right, at the start of the season. Um, not having him until right before Christmas. And then the time that he would have had, like, he needed the three games that we missed more than anybody to get his rhythm back. He got it a little bit. Greg can really score the ball. He can score the ball. He can, we can throw it to him in the post. He can score. He can step out, face up, and shoot. And when we need some baskets, we got it to him around the basket. And he made some nice plays. We didn't hit him. Right? We didn't make those threes, but he made nice reads when people start doubling. Um, he's a weapon for us. And since he's been back, since we've been back since Christmas, Right, we were plus ten on the glass against Indiana. We were plus twelve on the glass at Northwestern, and we go we go even against Purdue. Right, like we're we're starting to dominate on the glass, and he's doing it. His effort, John's effort, Jelani White's effort, uh, total team. But those three guys uh, are, are doing a great job, and we got to keep Greg's rhythm going because he can help us. He can get us easy baskets, which is what we need. Two more questions, John and Ben. Michael, you talked earlier this week a lot about this game and how close you were with a lot of people at Purdue. What were your emotions like leading up to this game, and did you feel like any of that bled into the game once it tipped off? I don't, uh, not really, not really. Uh, you know, I knew this would be a tough game. It's not the first time I've done it. All right, I've, I've coached other places and left and, and had to coach against them again. Uh, so, like, it, it wasn't that big of a deal. I, I think. You know, once the game got going, um, you know, you, you're not even thinking about who's down on the other sideline. Um, you're just competing. You're just competing. I saw a bunch of those guys before the game, right? So you get some of that out of the way. But, like, we're all friends. We're all friends. Uh, but we're all competitors. And like, they want to win that game as bad as we wanted to win that game. And that was it. And that was all my whole mindset. Um, I'm pretty uh, – I don't even know what to say. I, I got like a one-track mind, and uh, I was just locked into trying to help us win. And I knew Coach Payne was going to do that. And, and like, you know, and then once it was over, like it's over, right? Sorry, I made you guys wait because I was out there talking to him about different things, not even about the game. He's telling me stories about stuff that happened. If you guys know Coach Payne, he likes to tell stories. We were out there. He's telling me stories about different things that happened in practice everything else um, so now I can call him more and ask him questions about other teams when we start playing so I guess that's the benefit of this you talked about watching film of this game when you sort of self-evaluate yourself after a game which I guess is what self-evaluation means um, what are sort of the check boxes that you want to check off of this was a well-coached game I'm satisfied if you're ever satisfied with how you handled things for the most part yeah um, we had a, <clears throat> since we've come back from Christmas, I had those days off. Uh, and I talked about it, I think after the Indiana game, we really went back and looked at what was working and what wasn't working. Here's the areas we need to improve on. Um, here's what we're doing. So I just look at those areas. What's our transition defense look like? Are we doing a good job there? What's our three-point defense look like? Are we doing a good job there? Like, you know, go the other side of the ball, our turnovers. So I'll look at those, how they're happening. Um, I'll look at our offensive rebounding and if we're doing well there. So I go back and check those areas. And then 
you know, after that, then I'll probably figure out how can I put, like, where are the areas I can help us, you know, maybe get easier shots or what, what can we do to do something better? I mean, I think it may not look like it, um, but you know, we, we changed some stuff up. It probably all looks the same to you, but like, you know, based on how they were gonna guard us, based on their personnel, there were like two or three different things that we were gonna try and stay in offensively and just run those to get the best action. So, um, like, did those work? Did those not work? Is that something like you may not see it again the rest of the season? It might, it may not, um, there may not be another team where it, it would work against. So it could be something completely different against Rutgers. So that's what I look at. Like, um, you know, the opportunities of can we get easier shots? Can I help us defensively? Should we have stayed man or zone? You know, I'll take a look at that stuff. But we gave an effort. We gave our best effort. And that's all I care about. Thank you, Coach. Thank, Thank you, guys. Thank you.